Good morning, dear friends. I bid you greetings and God's blessings as we join together in worship on this Holy Ascension Sunday. Let us prepare our hearts and minds in prayer. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. pray. O God, the King of glory, who, ex who hast exalted thine only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph unto thy kingdom in heaven, we beseech thee, leave us not comfortless, but send thine Holy Ghost to comfort us and exalt us unto that same place whither our Savior Christ is gone before who liveth and reigneth with thee and the same Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the Apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, they were gazing up toward heaven. Suddenly two men in white robes stood by them, they said, Men of Galilee, 
Why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come down in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went into the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as though some strange thing were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, so that you may be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to desire. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are under the same kind of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus looked up into heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I've made your name known to those whom you have given me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them. They have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Grant us grace, O Lord, to behold thy wondrous and redeeming works in our lives. Grant that the words from our lips and meditations we offer in our hearts, and the voices that we raise to in praise and song may be acceptable to you, Christ, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Sunday, Ascension Sunday, is essentially the last time during the season of Easter where we f reflect upon the resurrection of Jesus. It's a Sunday in which we remember that Christ ascended to God the Father and no longer appeared to his disciples bodily in the resurrection. So today we are on the f phase, or on the eve, of a new season of teaching and preaching and thinking about the Word of God as it relates to us in the full dimension of our human experiences. And the meditations for this morning are from the 17th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, the 20th through 26th verse. And in this passage, we hear about Jesus in a very special way as Jesus prays for his disciples that they may be comforted and protected. And a few interesting parts of the text, the whole text, bear this out. Firstly, the text no notes that Jesus prays for his disciples. And then the next part of the text goes on to say, Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you. And the love which you have lo with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. And if we look at these words carefully, they're consistent with the whole theme of the Gospel according to St. John, which focuses on the divinity of Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God. But this Gospel today also zeroes in and focuses on the gift of prayer as a medium through which Jesus' intercessions are made. And so this prayer from John 17, verses 20 to 26, is it essentially an intercessory prayer, also known as the high priestly prayer of Jesus, as Jesus prays for his disciples. And when we pray, we use many terms, but the, Lord, the term Lord comes up many, many times in our scriptures and in the petitions that we offer. Now the term Lord is common in the New Testament it's used as a title for Jesus. But in the Old Testament, the term Lord referred to God. And the New Testament, the term continues to refer to God, but also to Jesus. So the word Lord was understood as a reference to God, 
or as an agent of God. So when we pray and when we call upon the Lord, to whom do we pray? Jesus, Messiah, Son of Man, Son of God, Lord. It's interesting, Jesus challenged Peter to tell him who he was. He wanted Peter to understand Jesus as the Messiah, but he didn't want Peter to base his understanding on simply what other people said. And so the challenge for each of us is to understand and fully appreciate the presence of Jesus in our lives as the Son of God. And if you look at the last text of our Gospel text for this morning, it's a text which, in which the word prayer is used very deliberately. And the word prayer was used to also to describe the actions of the disciples of Jesus who were gathered together in the upper room. So prayer is not simply something to be taken lightly. It's not just a physical act to invoke a spiritual presence in our lives. But prayer is important because it maintains our dialogue and conversation with God and asking God to be with us in our pilgrimage through life and our walk of faith. Now during the past few months, many of us have been praying especially hard for relief and restoration of health amid all the challenges around COVID-19. We have been praying for our safety and those of others and for God and those uh, others who are facing challenging times. We've just heard in recent days about the dam which broke and disrupted the lives of so many thousands of people in the state of Michigan. And we've also heard uh, globally about many natural disasters, including a recent cyclone to hit parts of India and Bangladesh and other parts in uh, South and Southeast Asia. And so many people have lost their lives due to tragic acts of nature due to this pandemic, but also in the midst of all the sadness we hear signs of hope. We hear stories of other people who are healing, who are getting better. We hear stories of possibilities for new vaccines. So we have been blessed and overwhelmed all at the same time. But isn't it wonderful that through the gift of prayer we maintain a constant means of contact to the God who created and loves each one of us and with the many people in our lives gives our own lives a sense of meaning and purpose. The disciples of Jesus were saddened at the physical departure of Jesus from their presence. But at the same time, they drew comfort from one another and, from with the, and also from the promise that God's Holy Spirit would be with them. And in the same manner, we're all called to take comfort knowing that gradually life and its joys and challenges will return to some level of familiarity. However, things will never remain the same. But each new challenge, each new beginning, is a cause for thanksgiving, for wonder, and for opportunity, especially when we are called to place our faith and trust in the presence of God, through Jesus Christ, with the grace and the consolation of the Holy Spirit. Now, as we sing together our closing hymn, Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise, I ask that you pay a special attention to the last phrase, the last stanza, which essentially goes, Lord, may our mortal sight raise our hearts to reach thy height. There thy face unclouded see, find our heaven in heavens in thee. Now this hymn was originally published in 1739 or so but by Charles Wesley and the Alleluia part that we also sing was added much later, about 1852 or so. And in a very simple sense, the words of this hymn are constant reminders to look upward 
to look outward, to look forward, to look with hope-filled anticipation and expectation that the risen Christ will take care and watch over each one of us throughout our pilgrimage through life. So, dear friends, amid all the things that we hear about, amid all the changing and challenging events and circumstances, what the scriptures are constantly reminding us is don't worry, remain happy, stay positive, remain joy-filled, stay blessed. For the mercy and grace and love of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will sustain us now and in the coming days and in all our days to come. Because God always fulfills His promises to His faithful people. And today, May we especially remember that through the gift of prayer, we can offer unto God the best of ourselves, the best of the gifts that we have been blessed with. And so, be intentional today in thinking about people in our lives, either closely connected or somewhat distant over time. Take a moment to especially pray for them, for their well-being for their health, for their strength, for their growth in faith. Because through the gift and the power of prayer, we link ourselves to the power of Almighty God and with one another, so that we can celebrate this gift which we all enjoy called life, and the full dimensions that it offers to each one of us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of God's gracious and abiding love. May God continue to bless each and every one of you with His grace and presence now and in the times to come. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the res resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy true holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. 
We beseech thee also to rule the hearts of those who bear authority of government in this and every land, especially the President of the United States, the members of Congress, and all regional and local authorities, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Ada, Alan, Alex, Andrea, Anne, Anacuti, Anthony, Autumn, Betty, Betty C., Chris, Kurt, Dan, David, Diane, Donna, Dorothy, Earl, Eleanor, Ellen, Emily, Gary, George, Greg, Hannah, Joan, Joanne, Joe, Joel, John, Joy, Cameron, Ken, Lorraine, Mark C., Mark, Matthew, Michelle, Nancy, Roger, Sarah Grace, Shanti, Steve, Sue, Suzanne, Teresa, Tria, and William, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We pray for those in military service, especially for Christian, Dave, Eileen, John, Robert, and Stephen. For the unemployed and underemployed, for all who suffer from addictions, for all who suffer chronic illness, especially those suffering the effects of COVID-19, and for all caregivers. For a companion diocese of Torre Ecuador Central, and for mercy, peace, and justice among all peoples, especially those whose lives have been devastated by natural disasters, terrorism, war, family, famine, tyranny, or injustice. For the petitions in the diocesan cycle of prayer and the Anglican cycle of prayer this week. And we bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed in this life in thy fe faith and fear, remembering especially those who have lost their lives in this pandemic, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Peter and Edmund, and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate.
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on the eve of this Memorial Day weekend, we remember all those who have sacrificed and offered their lives to this nation and for the cause of peace and safety in this nation and all around the world. May we join our hearts and minds as we pray. Almighty and most merciful God, we come before your holy presence at this time, remembering all those in our midst who have faithfully labored in the cause of freedom and peace. At this time, we especially remember all who have died on behalf of this grateful nation to bring peace and security within our borders and among the nations of the world. We remember this day their dedication and sacrifice and we honor their devotion to the cause of a just peace. Bless, we pray, all those who have fallen, especially remembering the families and loved ones of those who continue to mourn their passing. As we honor their faithfulness and sacrifice, may we and our nation continue to work toward peace and goodwill among all people, both within our nation and throughout the world. In all ways, may our life, our deeds, and our public witness faithfully accomplish the high calling to love one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, as the Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ who has passed into the heavens clothe you with power from on high. May the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forever. Amen.